Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ghani, my fabric shop, which as you can see, I'm in just now. And in this video, I wanted to share with you some fun, inspiring ideas for festive makes and party wear that you might want to make over the upcoming festive season. Now, I'm not talking like red carpet, ball gown, black tie event outfits here. It's more like maybe more smart casual vibes, something a little bit sparkly, a little bit special. If you've got some gathering with family and friends maybe, or you're just getting out and about a bit more in this festive season than you have been over the last few years. And um, if you are in the UK, then obviously you'll know that the, res the, the COVID restrictions have just sort of put a dampener on things for the past few years. But yeah, I think this this year feels like maybe it could be getting a bit more back to normal in terms of in terms of events, socialising and that sort of thing. So I've got a few different groups of types of fabric. They're all on the website and I'll link to the blog post that goes with this video as well. So I'll put the link to that in the description and it's the best place if you want to find specific fabrics that I'm talking about um, and you can see the pattern suggestions that I mentioned as well. Now some of the, sometimes the fabrics do sell out quickly if you're looking for a fabric on the website and it's out of stock do sign up for a stock notification and then we will let you know when it's back available again. So the other thing I wanted to say was some of the patterns that I mentioned aren't necessarily like traditional paper patterns that I, that we stock in the shop. Some are PDFs that you can get on on my website and some are PDFs that you will have to go to the pattern company's website to get. Um, if you're still quite new to PDFs, don't be put off. Remember, we do have our A0 pattern printing service. So once you've got your PDF files, you can order them to be printed on my website, upload the files, and then we print them off on the big A0 sheet so, so you're not having to stick pieces together or anything. Um, and it can be a really good, using PDFs can be a really good way to just expand what patterns are available and give you a lot more choice if you are looking for a specific type of, of pattern or, or garment or whatever as well. So first of all, I wanted to talk to you about the sparkly, sparkly sequins. So we, we've, we've had sequins in, in the past, um, and then they, they kind of didn't, weren't as popular for a few years, but then I saw these ones, they were a little bit different from ones we've had before. And they're really good quality ones. Um, sequins can vary a lot in quality and quite often it comes down to how dense the sequins are as well. Um, and also like the quality of the base that they're on. So we've got a range of four different colors. They're on um, a, a sort of net, power mesh backing fabric which does have some um, stretch in it going like up and down this way here it's not it's not really stretchy like it's got it's got to give this way I wouldn't say it's stretchy this way but it is stretchy that way and the sequins are sewn on in lines so it's kind of like a linear sequence they are little mini sequins so these ones are good because you kind of can just sew through them like you don't need to unpick them from your seams or anything and um, we did do a, kit, a sequin sewing society kit a good few years ago and it was using the closet core um, Celio top and I show you how to line it in the video as well because that top doesn't come lined out the pattern but I show you how to line it with just a, a plain viscose fabric um, and and really you just sort of sew through it and um, obviously if you're cutting it out you know it is quite heavy going going through the sequins I would if you've I actually have more than one pair of dressmaking scissors because I've got old ones that I tend to use um, sometimes maybe when I don't want to use my, my really special ones that are extra sharp. So I use my older dressmaking scissors, which do still cut, they're just not as sharp as my newer ones. So I, I would usually use them on, on the sequin fabric. Um, I mean, if you're just cutting out one sequin garment, it's probably not going to blunt your scissors. If you were to make sequins all year round, then it might. Um, but you know, one garment is not going to not going to ruin your scissors or anything and um, so yeah we have four colors of it this one is on a black power mesh and then as you can see it's sort of darker pink and then we've also got a lighter pink but it is on it is on a pink mesh and um, so it's obviously just got much more sort of softer softer pink vibes to it and um, this one here and then we've got two sort of like goldy kind of bronzy ones one is on a cream base so again it's just got that kind of lighter aesthetic to it so this one here and then the other one is on a black mesh now with these sequins because they are you know they're it's the, the mesh that they're on is quite lightweight and it's quite floppy 
you are going to have to wear something underneath or you're going to have to line whatever you make. So you could definitely just make like a sheer top or a sheer garment and then either wear a slip underneath it or a vest top or you could line it with a woven fabric. So we've got just some plain black viscose or we've got a cream as well, which would work with the lighter bases. And you could you could make woven top patterns with that. So like the Closet Core Cilio or the Grain Line Scout Tee is another one that I have made a sequin top out of in the past. The Friday Pattern Company Square Neck Top is also a nice one. And you could even make the True Bias Ogden Cami. I have made a sequin version of that in the past as well. The only thing I would warn you about is that you can get a little bit of chafing under the arm just because it's a it's a vest top of the Ogden. So the sequins end up sort of rubbing a little bit under your arm. But if it's, if it's just for an evening or a day, then usually you can kind of deal with that all in the name of sequins and looking sparkly. Um, so so yeah, you could use like woven top pattern, line it with a woven fabric, but I actually think you could make something out of jersey as well. And then you could line it with just like a lightweight jersey fabric too, um, and then have the sequins over it. So that could also work as well. The other thing that I was thinking would also, could also work and look nice is we do have some of the Atelier Brunette um, elasticated waistband elastics as well and I think you could make a skirt a, like a, an elastic waistband skirt out of that as well and then you could you could again just line it with a woven fabric and that would look really cool if the the lines on the sequins were kind of going down so a few ideas of things that you could do with that and then the other sequin one that we have got is this one here which which is a bit out there, but I don't know. It was just like, when I saw it, I was just kind of taken aback with how um, kind of amazing it was. The sequins are also very dense on this one. They're definitely denser than they are on the, the linear sparkle one. And yeah, as you can see, it's more like a sort of animal print. Now, I think depending on what you're making, it might be that you have to cut something out of the seam allowance here, but the sequins are quite small, so you might be okay. Um, this is on a power mesh backing as well, but I think because the sequins are just a bit denser and closer together, it doesn't really have the give and the stretch that the other ones do. Um, it's, it, it sort of feels like a bit more structured and a bit more kind of heavy, that one. And then the final sequins that I've got to show you, my sound went a little bit funny here, so I have just had to record a voiceover for this bit. It's this black one where some of the sequins are matte finish and some are a shiny finish, so it gives this sort of stripe stripey effect on it and um, again it's on that mesh background so it's got a little bit of stretch in it as well so the stretch goes at 90 degrees to the selvage and it's probably quite light, lighter weight like the density of the sequins on this one isn't quite as much so you would still need to line it with something like you would with those other sequins um, and then the next category that I've got to show you is some stretch velours um, or stretch velvets. We have got four different colours of this, a classic black and then a really lovely rich green colour and then this absolutely gorgeous sort of tealy bluey colour which we have called peacock. And then we have got the red as well, which is a lovely shade of red, it's called Claret. So this fabric feels really, really soft and it is stretchy. Um, so if I unroll a little bit, just so that I can hold up to show you, but I'll show you all the colors close up anyway. Um, this one feels so, so lovely and lovely and luxurious with that sort of velvety kind of sheen on it. Um, it is cr crossways, so at 90 degrees to the selvage, it's really, really super stretchy. So very, very stretchy that way. In this direction, it is a bit stretchy as well. So that's parallel to the selvage. It does, it does stretch, but not as much as it stretches crossway like this. So um, it's, it's, it's almost got a four way stretch really. So this fabric would be really good for the Friday Pattern Company Adrian top that's got those um, really lovely big billowy sleeves on it as well. The So Liberated Stasia dress I think would also work nicely or the Cashmere Appleton wrap dress. 
um, or with a bit more sort of drape and kind of texture. The Sovereign Georgie dress is another really nice one. Or the Joni dress from Tilly and the Button stretch book. It's got that kind of knot at the front, which looks really nice. And I think they have a sample sewn up and stretch velour as well, which looks lovely. So a few really nice options there for that for that um, stretchy fabric. I mean, you could even just make a simple sort of t-shirt style top and because it's got that, that kind of sheen and luster to it, it would make something like that even look really fancy and festive. And then the next one I've got is a bit unusual. Um, I've put it with the velvet ones because it has got this sort of devore kind of finish on it, um, which looks a bit like I want to say it's maybe like got a little bit of snakeskin vibes and stuff like that usually creeps me out but I actually thought this was quite cool. Um, the backing fabric is a Ponte Roma so it's like a kind of double knit stretch fabric but the finish, this kind of velvety devore finish that is on the fabric seems to sort of give it a bit more structure and it makes it not quite as stretchy as what a Ponte Roma would normally be but you can see you know it does have like a decent bit of stretch it's got I would say it's got fairly good recovery as well you know it does spring back and um, it doesn't have any stretch parallel to the selvage it's just crossways that it's got it so it is just a two-way stretch so for this one I think it would look really cool as a skirt and there's a deer and doe skirt called the broomy broom that you can get which I, I thought would work really really nicely for it it's just a sort of fitted pencil skirt or there are a pair of trousers that I found as well which I think would work with it they're a style arc one and they are the Parker Ponte trousers so I think that would look really, you know, it's just like a kind of cool, chic, smart pair of trousers or a skirt that is that is black. So then, you know, you could pair it with lots of things, but because it's got that devore finish on, it just gives it some really nice texture and just sort of, yeah, makes it a little bit more special. Um, I think you probably could make like a, a sweatshirt pattern in it as well. You know, I have seen people make the Green Line Linden, for example, in a, in a Ponty before. And then there is the, the Tilly and the Buttons Coco dress or top as well. That's quite an old pattern now, but it calls for Ponty Roma. And I think that would, you know, you'd probably be fine making something like that out of it as well. Um, so a few different options. And it's just, I do feel like it's something different from what I would normally pick, but I just thought it was really unusual. So yeah, see what you think. Um, and then the next category that I wanted to talk to you about was printed viscoses. And I should have probably mentioned at the start because it might, I usually get quite a lot of questions about what I'm wearing. Um, I am wearing a printed viscose and this is the Fiber Mood Ermine blouse pattern. And this is one of the Fabric Godmother Viscose Crepes. This is one of their new ones. And I've picked a selection of ones that I felt were maybe like a bit more festive sort of celebration party vibes. So yeah, there is the one that I have got on, which is the Ziggy print. Um, and it is really nice. It's, it's opaque, so you don't need to line it. And yeah, it's got it because it's got that crepe finish, it's just sort of textured a little bit. And as you can see on me, it does drape really nicely. So this has got subtle gathers in at this blouse here, and then it's got them at the back as well. And it's just really nice if you want to, if you're maybe going out in the evening, you want to pair it with some jeans, or I've got it on with some smart black trousers here today, and it just feels like a little bit more fancy, I guess, because it's stars and yeah and um, feels a bit a bit more dressed up and then we have also got this star print as well which is one of the older fabric godmother prints but i think it is absolutely gorgeous this is the dazzle cobalt visco sateen finish so because it's got that it's that sateen finish it's just got a bit more of a kind of sheen to it it's really really beautiful and quite a large scale star print as well it's lovely and um, leslie who works in the shop is making a blouse out of this right now and I think it's going to look gorgeous and I just know when I see it I'm probably going to want one myself as well um, and then you might have seen this one already as well but I think this is gorgeous for this time of year and it is the really popular fabric godmother Joni print but it's on a viscose crepe this time so previously it's been on a cotton lawn and it's been on a viscose lawn so it has a sort of flatter texture this one's on a crepe so it's got like a little bit more of a sort of raised texture on it and it's just this absolutely beautiful large scale floral stripe which you can really kind of play around with when you come to cut things out so I actually made a top in the summer 
out of this fabric using the, the original colourway which had a sort of cream background and I made the fibre mood Tanita top and then I had these kind of columns of the the flowers going across it. It's like a really loose sort of bat wing style top. It's so quick and easy. But in a striking fabric like this, it looks, it's really impactful. Like it looks really, really nice. And I think this one is just absolutely gorgeous. And um, the, the colors have come out really clearly on it. It's just been, it's just a really, really, really beautiful fabric. And then the last one that I picked out is this Cheetan Heart one, it's called, and it's on the emerald background. And I guess this colour really has just got more sort of festive vibes with it being the dark emerald green. And then it's got that leopard print on it where they're actually hearts. So yeah, there's a nice, nice little bit of detail in there as well. But I think that's another gorgeous one. Again, it's a viscose sateen, so it's got that sort of kind of shine, little bit of a shiny finish, which I think makes it look a little bit more sort of smarter, or fancier, or like a little bit more dressed up. Um, so that's another really lovely option. So um, anything with gathers looks good in all these types of fabric. The new Tilly and the Buttons Marnie, Marnie blouse or dress would be nice. And Fibre Mood have got quite a lot of really kind of pretty little blouses and dresses and stuff. So yeah, this one was the Ermine, but there's also the Norma blouse as well. And then the Tanita top, which I mentioned too, that's another really nice Fibre Mood one. But it is, it is worth checking out the Fibre Mood website and having a look there. They've got lots of different cute little blouses. The assembly line cuff top would also be quite a nice simple one um, and the Friday Passion Company Davenport dress I think would also be really really nice too. So hopefully that gives you some ideas and pointers of the types of things that you could make with it. Obviously there's hundreds probably thousands of patterns out there that you could use but hopefully by just me suggesting a few different types for each of the categories of fabric it sort of steers you in a direction and maybe even if you find a different pattern you'll be able to be like oh yeah it would be good for this fabric and um, if it's similar to one of the ones I've suggested. If you're ever not sure you can always um, leave a comment and I shall try and get back to you. The quickest way to get any help or answers though is always just to email us because the the g, &G team and um, monitor our inquiries email address all the time and um, six days a week so that's info at guthrie-ganny.co.uk but remember to check out the blog post in there I'll summarize all of the fabrics that I have mentioned and I'll put links to all the patterns as well so do check that out and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already then just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video but thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time Bye.